In the shadows of New York City, there may be a vicious monster on the loose. This thing could be lurking around and jump out at anybody uh, at any time. In areas that aren't usually home to large predators. He then reached up and he scratched this tree. These beasts possess frightening strength and speed. These animals are absolutely solid muscle. They kill for a living. There's no such thing as a, as a tame wild animal. And they are known to ruthlessly stalk and then attack their prey. They can jump up and land on a roof. They're that powerful just from a standstill. He put his mouth here on my jaw and his upper fangs in the back of my neck. Monster Quest is searching for tigers in the suburbs. It's moving through the brush. <laughs> Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers. On Monster Quest. New York City, the financial capital of the world. More than 18 million people live in the metro area, making it one of the most populated places on Earth. But most of these people don't live in the canyons of Manhattan. Many live in the suburbs, in places with main streets, swimming pools, and playgrounds. And now something may be stalking these wooded suburbs, stealthy hunters with a taste for flesh. This creature was much bigger than any domestic cat. When I saw him jump over the rock, he had a long tail. So he was a pretty massive cat. Eyewitnesses describe seeing large, muscular cats, eight feet long and weighing as much as 130 pounds. They have rounded ears, long tails, and sharp, razor-like teeth that can tear apart flesh. Upstate New York's indigenous wild big cat population was eradicated in the early 20th century. Or so it was thought. My dad was, like, petrified. Dorian Tunnell and his son were on a bike ride just a few blocks from home when they were startled by something in the nearby undergrowth. It sounded like thrashing in the woods, and I looked up and I saw a large black cat jumping over a rock. Tunnell immediately thought of his son. I think uh, when I first saw the cat, it was fear initially. My son was in front of me, he was closer to the cat than I was. Uh, the cat was about 25 yards away. My, my dad told me to stop, and they said to look up. Just across their paths were two massive cats. The cats were like shiny black and up to my chest. True to its nature, one animal seemed to be lying in ambush. The other was clearly visible. Extremely shiny black, very shiny black. Um, I'd never seen anything that black and shiny on an animal before. My initial reaction was just to get out of the area as soon as possible. Their only escape was the way they came, which meant turning their backs on the dangerous predators. To make matters worse, Tanel's son was struggling to turn his bike. My dad told me to um, drop the bike. And then I started like running behind, like behind him. He was next to me running, and I picked him up with one arm, and we just rode out of there pretty fast. This sighting was one of more than a dozen that occurred in the area in just over a month, creating a wave of fear among locals. But most big cat experts remain skeptical of the reports of mysterious large cats in the Northeast. So on the east coast of the United States, really the only breeding population of wild cats would be the bobcats. Scott Lope, director of Big Cat Rescue, says the only big cats that ever lived in the area were mountain lions, also known as cougars, and they are not black. The only large cat population that ever existed in New York or that whole northeastern region would be the mountain lion or the cougar, and they were actually eradicated there by 1900. Lope suggests that misidentification is a more likely explanation. In all reality, I would lean more toward being a black lab or just a large domestic black cat. Very, very hard to determine size from a distance. And when you're catching a glimpse of something, it's moving fast. It's usually at night or near dark. 
really tough conditions to tell how big something is. And you know, when you get the adrenaline going, you're very excited, can be very misleading. There are only two black cat species similar in size to those seen by witnesses. The leopard, which isn't indigenous to North America and can only be seen in zoos, and the black jaguar, which is seen only in Central and South America. There are some 15,000 big cats kept in captivity in the U.S. And shockingly, only a small percentage are in accredited zoos. In 2000, a four-year-old boy was bitten on the neck and face by a 40-pound African serval that was being taken for a walk. In 2003, a Bengal tiger weighing over 400 pounds was found in a Harlem apartment after it injured its owner. And more recently, in northern New York, a four-year-old girl was hospitalized after her grandmother's 160-pound caged cougar mauled her. It is believed that the captive cat population in the U.S. includes more animals than the worldwide population of big cats in the wild. Now Monster Quest will launch an investigation into these reported cat sightings. They'll start the search in Palisades, New York, just north of New York City. Here the team will investigate this unknown predator seen by witnesses. The expedition team includes mammal expert Dr. Esteban Sarmiento, professional tracker Mark Peterson, camera technology expert Jeremy Holden, and wildlife expert Dale Pearson. Yeah, they seem to see black, and, and I don't think it's, it's, it's because it's dusk or nighttime. Have you ever heard of a black mountain lion, a melanistic mountain? There's dark ones, but I think in broad daylight you'd expect them to see at least that it's a dark brown and not a black. Well, if it's a black cat, it's not a mountain lion. Plus, there haven't been a wild population, according to New York State, since the 1890s. Have the sightings been recent? The, the sightings in this area, it's, it's recently, a day or two ago. We should probably pick out some areas on this topo and set out some cameras, see if we can't find anything that way. The team's plan is to deploy several wireless trail camera systems throughout the forest. The cameras are motion sensitive and can be monitored remotely. When the camera detects movement, it wirelessly transmits an alert signal and a picture of the animal back to the base camp computer. I'm going to look for rock faces, uh, rock outcroppings, big twisted deadfalls, uh, because big cats will utilize these types of areas to jump down on prey. They're ambush hunters. So anytime you can find a rock outcropping with a, uh, a game trail below it is a good thing. I think we're going to go for, I think if we go for that gully through there, that's a perfect channeling, just the kind of place a cat's going to come. Shine it right in the center of that gully. You're going to gain a lot of distance on that. To increase their chances of seeing the dark coloration of the cat, they install infrared LED lights. So I'm going to angle this with the same angle of view as the camera. Right. And then it will trigger the, the auxiliary light exactly the same time that this gets triggered. That's perfect. Perfect. A total of four cameras will be mounted. Yep. They can hide up in this thing and they can look down at this whole valley on the bottoms and view their prey, which in this case is white-tailed deer. It's also a great shelter. I've seen similar things in, in Israel with um, leopards, also found uh, evidence of cloudy leopards breeding in similar kind of places. Really? It's exactly the kind of place they'd rest up for sure. The thing about large cats, they need cover, they need a prey base. If those two things are there, then it's quite possible there could be large cats. That's perfect. I'm thinking we go out, you know, towards the evening time when maybe these things are feeling a little more comfortable in the dark and 
try to try to maybe find one then, you know, closer to the waterways maybe. The team will conduct a night search using a DNA dart gun to try to capture a genetic sample of any unidentified creatures they encounter. The darts we're going to be using are called DNA darts and they're specially designed, these ones are specially manufactured for this expedition just to take a, a sample of the dermal and epidermal layer of the cat. So when we hit it, we'll be able to extract a sample of the DNA and bring it back to the laboratory so we can positively identify what this thing is. The gun is also fitted with a light amplifying night scope. It's going to enable us to be able to track and identify a target in pitch black darkness and be able to deliver a DNA dart onto it to get a sample without the animal knowing where we are at any time before or after the shot. Between starlight scopes, a couple thermal uh, imaging cameras, a dart gun with a phenomenal light scope on it, we've got so much stuff on this because it allows you to go out into the night when these big cats would be hunting and, and have a chance of finding something. How many shots you get out of that? About 25. All we need is one. Good? All right, let's do it. Let's go. While the rest of the team heads out to set up the cameras, Dr. Sarmiento is meeting a local researcher who has tracked the sightings. People living in the town are very scared and they really want an explanation. They want to know what's out there. Cats have been known to pick up whether or not they are being stalked and then circle back and then actually stalk those who are stalking them. It is not long before Sarmiento hears a frightening story. It seems that the cats have been hunting in the area. There was a witness in Rockland Lake just by the golf course that witnessed um, two deer being chased across the fairway by one of these panther. New York State has an overabundance of white-tailed deer, a natural food source for a big cat. Having tracked through this area and going deeper into the bush behind all of these homes, I'm starting to notice more and more deer kills back here. And uh, a little bit different from what a coyote or a coyote clan would do. Um, these cats, they'll chase these deer and they'll get them. And they are actually used to caring if there's any threat of any other predator taking their their game away, they'll drag these deer up into trees. Dr. Sarmiento continues to search, and it is not long before he is led to a strange track. Yeah, we got a compression shape, and the overall shape is round, and that's really significant when it comes to cats. Your domesticated cat all the way up to the lion. The mysterious cat tracks are next to some deer tracks, showing the relative size of the creature. And even though it's this deer track is significantly larger than a standard house cat, it is dwarfed by the size of this right. track. Dr. Sarmiento documents the tracks for later analysis. The evidence that I did find were of the tracks. Now, these particular tracks are truly unique to a large cat. <laughs> Monster Quest is searching New York State for mysterious large cats seen recently by witnesses. Nature and history say these sightings are not possible. These are creatures that should not exist here. The only large cat in the Western Hemisphere that is sometimes black in appearance is the jaguar. This cat's name comes from an Amazon tribal word that likely means the wild beast that overcomes its prey at a bound. U.S. ranchers who blamed the jaguars for killing their livestock hunted them down. In the 1890s, these cats finally disappeared from America, although jaguars have recently been spotted in southern Arizona. Today, the mountain lion is the only large cat believed to inhabit the U.S. Its range extends from Washington State to West Texas. The exotic cats in the United States, they really, they, they started out as, as circus animals or zoo animals. 
The history of exotic cats in America dates back to 1768, when the first leopard arrived from Africa. A local merchant sold tickets to see the huge cat. The ad in the New York Mercury stated, Gentlemen and ladies may have a full yet safe view of the leopard, as he is well secured by a chain. Then in 1806, the first tigers arrived from Surat, India. They were put on display at Crombie's Tavern in Salem, Massachusetts. The public was fascinated by these exotic creatures and flocked to get a glimpse. The popularity of these attractions increased and some people began to keep these rare beasts as pets. As humans, we're always looking for the next best thing. And as these animals breed and, and more people realize they can get them or keep them as pets, they just, they just start to expand and they're easy to get. Experts believe that the growth in big cat ownership has led to a frightening situation. Most of the statistics or most of the experts really believe that there's more tigers in captivity in the United States than there are left in the wild around the whole world. That's, that's pretty sad. Many states have little or no regulation on the ownership of exotic cats. And when you talk about just the needs of the animal as far as caging it, feeding it, housing it for a 20 year commitment, it's easy to understand how people either worried about their finances, liabilities, or their own safety could want to get rid of this animal. Even more frightening is that the number of escapes and attacks are increasing. Tigers account for 50% of these attacks, lions for 15%, and cougars for 12%. There's no such thing as a, as a tame wild animal. You're talking about an animal that started out as a fun, cute little cuddly baby, and everybody loved it, but it's going to grow into a huge predator, and it's going to be an animal that can basically kill you. And I thought he was playing, but he cut my arms. Don Blakeney learned his lesson the hard way. For three and a half years, he raised pet cougars on his farm near Princeton, Minnesota. One day, as he was routinely cleaning their cages, Blakeney was attacked by one of his big cats. So as I walked from the feed pen back past the door, there was a little space between the door where he could get his arm through. And he did, and he tripped. The declawed cat wasn't able to kill him instantly. Instead, something worse happened. And I think that set off a, some kind of a feeling in him that he wanted to attack me because I was down I was I was I had my back to him and he did he came through the, the chain link door and he busted the, the links off and busted right through the door the cougar weighing 230 pounds bit down into his head with its two inch fangs every time I moved and yelled I felt bones cracking in my jaw and one time I felt the blood coming up in my eyes it was hot blood and so I just figured you know, you got me, I'm dead. And I said to the Lord that I hope I did it right this time. And I just kind of relaxed. And a little while after I relaxed, he got off me. And he backed up about four feet. The animal backed into its cage and Blakeney struggled to lock it. He then crawled to the house and called 911. And when I was laying out in the yard, waiting for the ambulance, I could hear my chest Googling blood out so I knew that it was deep when the ambulance arrived Blakeney's wounds were so critical that paramedics had him airlifted to a hospital he spent 10 days in intensive care and received 96 stitches but his jaw could not be saved the doctor said he could not replace my jaw he said he said he'd have to put a metal piece in there to hold it all together so so from about here to the center here is, is a metal piece and then there's a metal plate holding it to the bone, to my gums and my teeth. The number of exotic pets is on the rise in the United States, and some experts suspect that they have descended from an ever-decreasing gene pool. To test this theory, the science team will collect blood samples from tigers held in captivity across the United States. Then, DNA testing will be performed to determine if they are genetically linked. 
We actually were involved in the first genetic study of tigers. Brian Werner has been studying tiger genetics for more than a decade. He suggests that many captive big cats, which are kept as pets, are often inbred, leading to problems. Inbreeding can lead to a lot of different issues, cleft palates, uh, birth defects, uh, abnormal behavior, aggression, and those are the things that we really got to get concerned with. And one of the groups that we're concerned about are these alleged backyard breeders. These are people that get tigers and they start off with one or two and they decide they want a pair. And then they think they're going to make a lot of money selling tiger cubs. So they start breeding these animals. The problem is they have no history on them. The inbreeding of big cats may lead to far more aggressive animals, increasing the risk of deadly attacks. And we're going to break that DNA material down and we're going to test it. We're going to look at it and we're going to compare it. What kind of tiger is it? How much related is it to each tiger that's already in the testing? The tests will identify the degree of inbreeding and the genetic abnormalities that could lead to increased aggression. The tiger today is having a root canal performed and in that process we'll also go ahead and do a complete physical and we'll draw some blood for the DNA testing. Once Werner collects all 30 samples, they will be sent to a behavioral geneticist who will create a profile of each animal and determine if inbreeding can be confirmed. The expedition team is deep in the woods near Palisades, New York. They are investigating a series of eyewitness reports of large cats. Across the river from a game trail, Dale Pearson and Mark Peterson set up for night observation. I figured we could sit behind this bush as a blind and then get our camera up over there. Uh -huh. And then we can do our call blasting from here if anything comes on that hillside. They will use decoy calls, a proven technique for luring wild big cats. What do you think it is over there, about 60 yards? About 60 yards, right about 60. In addition, a wireless micron thermal camera will be mounted along the game trail and monitored at the blind. If an animal comes down the trail, the team will know before it gets to the water's edge, allowing them to get in position with the DNA dart gun. You know, we gotta get in our blind. Jeremy, you there? Back at base camp, Jeremy Holden is monitoring the wireless trail camera system installed earlier. We found a spot for the stationary thermal cam that we're gonna strap to a tree. What's going on back at the base? We had a deer come through about five minutes ago. There seems to be quite a bit going on around camera two. We're going to head to the blind, and if you see anything that you want us to go check out, let us know. Peterson is monitoring the wireless micron thermal camera that they have set up across the water, and uses an additional thermal camera to scan the shoreline. I don't know what I'm calling, but I'm going to use it, Robin, in distress first. The team uses two calls throughout the night. First they use prey in distress calls, and then the sounds of a mountain lion. After several rounds of each call, there is movement across the lake. I just saw something. I saw a hot spot on the hill about 9 o'clock. About 11 o'clock. I just saw it go by the brush. I can just see little pieces of orange. I can see it. That's it. I'm trying to find a better vantage point. Let me, let me get an angle on it. Let me see if I need a different angle on it. It's moving through the brush. Monster Quest is searching the woods of upstate New York for large cats that have been terrorizing neighborhoods. If a population of wild big cats is allowed to breed, it may lead to the kind of vicious encounters that are occurring in other parts of the country. 
While multiple witnesses across New York have seen big cats, many experts doubt that a wild breeding population exists in the Northeast. Well, the cats in New York that people reported seeing, you know, if they are a large black cat, very unlikely that they're a wild animal. Scott Lowe believes that people may be seeing an escaped pet. They would have to be an exotic cat that doesn't belong there. And again, I would lean more towards something that someone had turned loose or that it, is, that it escaped. Lope says that in New York State alone, there are more than 103 registered big cats and many more that are undocumented. These are animals that start out fun when they're a cub and they grow up to be deadly predators. And the simple fact is that these animals kill things bigger than humans and that's what they do for a living. So they are always dangerous, no matter who says they're tame or no matter who says it's safe. It's worse than a nightmare. You know, you just don't believe that this is happening to you. Avid hikers Jim and Nell Ham were on their daily hike in Northern California when a cougar suddenly leapt out of the woods and attacked. I went down. Then he ripped the top of my scalp off. I must have screamed out. We've been married almost 50 years and I've never heard that kind of sound come from him. And I turned around and he was on the ground with the lion on top of him and it had a hold of Jim by the head. And I'm on my face in the dirt, and then she's yelling at me to fight, Jim, fight. Nell jumped in to try to help her husband. She tried to stab the animal in the eye with a pen, but the pen nearly broke off. Then it shook its head, and it tore all this up, split it up on both tops and bottoms, tore it loose inside. Then it went right back onto my head. Nell found a log nearby and struck the cat with it repeatedly until the animal let go. The wounded couple limped to the nearest road to try to find help. I don't think about the lion when I go to bed. I don't wake up seeing the lion anymore. I've gotten that over with. But it was very traumatic because there was such an amount of time of thinking that I'm going to be dead and and being torn apart in the process. While big cats are aggressive by nature, some experts believe that captive cats may be even more aggressive. One theory is that inbreeding of captive animals is causing behavioral abnormalities, making them even more dangerous than their wild cousins. The question we're asking is, you know, in the general population, how much inbreeding there is. The Monster Quest science team is analyzing captive tiger DNA to create a genetic profile of 30 animals. These profiles will be compared to the DNA of wild tigers for any differences. A behavioral geneticist is, is uh, somebody who studies animal or human behavior and tries to find the genetic reasons for the behavior occurring or the genetic effects uh, of that behavior. The process is simple but time consuming. When we get a group of samples, uh, what we first have to do is, is find the DNA, get that out of the cells. We then take the DNA and we process it so that we can read it, so that we can come up with a pattern. Uh, we come up with a barcode per individual, and we look at the similarities between the barcode. In smaller populations, there will be less genetic diversity. This means that the animal has a higher chance of inheriting damaged or defective genes. These tests have been used in wildlife conservation to study how inbreeding can be detrimental to an already small wild population. If you increase inbreeding, you increase the chances of having some genetic disorder take over the population. The night observation has detected movement across the lake on the wireless thermal camera. I can see it. I, I, can, I can see it, but I can't tell what it is. It's too deep. Right now it's in the brush. You get a better vantage point. Dale Pearson is poised with the dart gun that will extract a DNA sample to conclusively identify any large feline creature. Let me see my different angle. It's moving through the brush. It's a deer. It's 
coming out. It's coming out. Daybreak brings fresh proof from the trail cameras of a food source sufficient to support a large cat. We've actually had a, a lot of movement on this camera, so it seems to be a good area for deer. But it's a nice shot. And it's, what it does show is it's a, it's a good prey base here. The team discusses their next move. That was really encouraging last night. We got a, a load of deer on the Buckeyes. Yeah, a lot of prey over there, so if we could find a way to get on the water somehow, maybe we can, I don't know, move along that bank kind of quietly. Yeah, you could try with a canoe maybe. We could use the night scope from the canoe. Yeah. When you're gliding down the river quietly, you can surprise things, and it's how jaguars are often seen in South America, so it's a, it's a good approach to, to try and surprise a cat as well here. The team sets out again, this time hoping to sight the cat by scanning the undergrowth from the river. Yeah, this looks like a good spot right here. Monster Quest is searching in the northeast for large cats that have struck fear into the local community. Twelve sightings is a lot for this community because it's small. Grace Knowlton was skeptical of the mysterious cat reports until she too saw a large cat just outside her window. So after my neighbor reported having seen them on her lawn, uh, the next week I was sitting in the living room and I saw a black panther going across at the top of the lawn. When I saw the panther, I'd say it was about 100 feet away. I could see it very clearly. This creature was much bigger than any domestic cat. The size was very different. It was much bigger. The way the panther walked was a slight crouch and a long tail that went out and curled up at the end. Pitch black and shiny coat. Then, a few nights later, the cats came back. Uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, the dogs barking to be let out. So I let them out and I went back to bed and in the morning they hadn't returned and that is completely unlike them. Knowlton feared the worst. They have never done that and I figured the panthers had killed them, that they were gone, that was it. The next morning, Grace and a neighbor followed the sounds of barking to a local woodlot. They found the dogs on a nearby cliff, scared and stuck. Grace believes her dogs chased the cats to the ledge. The dogs got as far as a rock outcropping, but there was space between that outcropping and the cliff, so they couldn't get back, and they were afraid to jump down. While the pets were not injured, they may have had a lucky escape. A lot of people have been frightened by the panther visit and don't want to go into the woods or go biking on the path in the park. And uh, I guess they're afraid of being attacked. Close to where this sighting took place, the Monster Quest team has found more startling evidence of the dangerous cat. Distinct claw marks on a tree near where the strange tracks were recently found point to the predator. If this is an escaped exotic pet, it has not been declawed. If he didn't have claws, he'd be more erratic, a um, bit more dangerous, more desperate for food. So in this sign, in this sense, I'm happy that he has claws because he's doing okay. The claw marks indicate that the cat is likely feeding. The team knows that a hungry beast would be much more aggressive. I would suppose it was able, able to hunt, and it might actually explain some of those deer kills they found farther down the hill. I agree. The tracks and claw marks are evidence that there is a large predator in the area. The team has decided to sneak along the river so it can observe both banks of the waterway with stealth and silence. 
Holden remains at base camp monitoring the wireless trail camera system. He will alert the team if the cats are spotted. Tonight we've got a few things that have turned up um, in camera one actually. It seems to have the most activity at the moment. We've got a, a strange image of a squirrel. And we've got a couple of nice shots of a raccoon. But no cats. There is no light left on the river as Dale and Mark wait. Our stream is getting considerably narrower here. Long holes. It's starting to look a lot better though too. These hills are coming down real nicely. The team is seeing more game trails and they are near the trail camera that was active with deer the night before. Now we're getting into some good stuff. Dale spots something through his scope, but it is deep in the underbrush. Dale, you want to go check that out? Yeah, bring me in. Bring me in. All right. In Saratoga Springs, New York, the tiger DNA testing is complete. Comparisons of inbreeding can now be made to other species. Now what you can see here is we look across this group of 12 or 13 rats here that they have identical patterns. Every single individual has a band. You can see these bands go right straight across like lines. And the reason I'm showing these is because these are inbred clones. So every individual in the population of this rat is about 98 to 100% genetically identical. The opposite is a group of completely unrelated individuals and these are variations on the same human cell line. Again, these are individuals that are unrelated. You can see a lot of variation in the pattern. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you now are the, some of the actual results that we've gotten for DNA profiles for the tigers that we've been testing. The results show that over half the tigers sampled are affected by moderate to severe inbreeding. This leads Brian Werner to believe that captive cats can be more aggressive due to inbreeding. I think what surprised me most about the study was just how close these tigers are related to each other. It's much closer than what we originally thought. And when we look at that little pattern that's going on with that inbreeding, it's even tighter. It's even more closely related. This means that the more big exotic cats are inbred, the greater the chance for abnormal traits, including heightened aggression, making them more likely to attack. What we're seeing here is basically what's considered a genetic bottleneck with the tigers. It's, it's definitely an issue that can lead to some of these behaviors, such as aggression, neurological disorders, reproductive problems. And, you know, we really need to be aware of this and watch after it. Monster Quest is searching for large black cats that have been spotted in upstate New York. Eyewitnesses report coming face to face with black cats prowling suburban communities. This father and his son encountered the creatures in a New York State Park. This woman saw two cats matching the descriptions in her own backyard. This man was attacked and almost killed by a big cat while he was hiking. The expedition team's night search has resulted in a sighting of something unknown. While Dale Pearson gets in position, Mark Peterson scans the area with a thermal camera. I got a hot spot about three quarters of the way up the hill. It's in the brush. I don't know what it is. Can you see it? I'm going to go in right now. Check out. Even with their sensitive thermal camera, the dense undergrowth means that the animal is difficult to identify. What they have seen is most likely a small forest animal, such as a bobcat. I don't think that's, I don't think it's a cat. It's definitely something, but I can't, I I can't make it out. It's, it's small though. Pearson and Peterson return to base camp eager to review the camera traps to see if they will reveal any evidence 
of big cats in the area. Yeah, so here's something right here. I think that's something right there. That, oh, that, yeah, there it goes. It just bounded off. It's hard to tell what it is. On the thermos. Yeah, look at this. I'm not really sure what that is, but it's not a deer. Uh, watch. I think that, that looks watch, like watch, a watch it run. Watch it run. Watch. See it take off? Yeah, it's like a folks or something. And lots of deers on that thermos. Oh, yeah. Right? Lots of these. Look, look at this that's one. Cool. Come right up to the camera. That's cool. Right up to the camera. Right up to it. We got a lot of pictures too. We had a number of buckeyes out, and we got a ton of shots. Uh, mostly, a lot of deer. Yeah, plenty of deer. If there, I'll tell you what. If there was cats in the area, they have to be hunting here. Yeah, that is prime cat habitat right there. The cameras picked up deer, raccoon, squirrels, and lynx. Basically, a lot of prey. Right? A, lot of prey. A, lot of a lot of prey items. Now, we got no, no black panthers. How about bears? Dr. Esteban Sarmiento has studied all the evidence collected, including the tracks and scratch marks, and discusses the results with the group. Well, we had plenty of signs in, back in town. You know, there was some pretty good uh, tracks. and You got tracks in town? Yeah, we got some pretty good tracks. And clear also, tracks? Yeah, they're clear. Definitely cats? They're definitely a large cat. And we got some uh, uh, claw marks. The most revealing pieces of evidence are the tracks. The team concludes that the prints are too small to be of a tiger or a jaguar. However, they match the size of a leopard, which can be black, and is similar to the eyewitness accounts. So we got, we got prints, claw marks, tracks plenty of food great uh, habitat and lots of eyewitness reports fresh recent eyewitness reports too so there's no doubt that they exist that's the hard part to dispute is all those people talking about seeing it yep yep what do you think what do you think it potentially is do, uh, wild animal or because it's next to town do you think it's domesticated i think the most the, the most likely candidate here would be uh, asian or, or uh, african leopard which uh, very often um, show black, black morphs, the, the melanistic morph. As for jaguar, probably less likely. This is, a, this is more of a jungle animal. But I can just picture where someone has an animal that they're not qualified to have, and it's gotten out, and they don't want to tell anybody, and now we're to this situation right here. And I, and I think that's what's happened here. The team believes the big cats are out there. But because of the size of the wilderness and abundant food sources, they will not easily be found. There is no real reason why they could not survive in this area and breed and really impact the wildlife that exists in northeastern United States. You know, hundreds of years ago we had mountain lions here. Well, the future could bring leopards. The Monster Quest expedition has yielded interesting results. The area in which these large muscular cats have been sighted is an ideal cat habitat with abundant food sources. Tracks discovered at the location of the sightings are from a large cat, likely a leopard, that may still be at large. And the science team has confirmed that the captive population of large cats in North America is highly inbred, and this could possibly increase the chances of violent attacks. When you don't really think of two cats being, you know, 20 miles away from New York City running around in the Palisades is actually true. Um, so some of the most unbelievable stories can be true. I mean, that was a, that was a good haul of, of images. And it's certainly what it did show to us is that there's a, a healthy population of large deer, which would be a perfect prey base for a large cat. And that's, that's the crucial thing. And it's why these large cats throughout the world their numbers are declining often because there just isn't the prey base to support them anymore. But that's not the case here. So we've proven that there's a large animal here with its tracks. We've proven that there's a food source here. We've proven that there's a habitat here. There's all the scenarios, all the evidence that we need to prove the existence and the potential for this animal to live here has been gathered, it has been proven, we have solved that riddle. You've got a community of people that are pretty active. They like to go hiking and use the mountain bike trails with their children and their pets. And of course the activity is sometimes fast. So in that 